Welcome to my chef and my name is Chef Fran and today my sous chef mm -hmm. is here, Ian. Welcome. How are we doing today? Okay, so today we're actually doing a chicory board, but we're on our lazy Susan. It makes it so much easier for us to just kind of turn the table. And it is our Q&A. Um, so we figured let's have some healthy snacks. And we have some people who ask us some questions um, as we're approaching our 100th episode. Can you guys believe that? And so we have our healthy fruit here, um, which are, we have our green and red apples, and we have our watermelon, pineapple, and our berries, strawberries and blueberries. And I'm gonna put some green grapes here for us, and some red grapes, and you know, you can't, you still have to have your little fixings and all the sweet stuff. So I have some cream cheese, I have some sugar-free caramel sauce, sugar-free chocolate sauce and sugar-free strawberry sauce and we have some granola mm. and on um, Ian, Ian has, is going to keep us healthy and strong with our veggies, yes. our broccoli, our cherry tomatoes, our tricolor bell peppers, orange, red and yellow, our carrots and our cauliflower. All of this here for the exception of the carrots mm. is keto friendly and if you want to throw in the carrots now you become low carb. And we have our dressing here. We have our honey mustard. We have a Miracle Whip and Chipotle. We have ranch and Ian's gonna make our goddess mm, Ma yes. Chef and Way. Our goddess dressing Ma Chef and Way. And um, and then he's also gonna I'm gonna finish setting up the grapes with you guys, and Ian's gonna set up the, this side of the veggie board. Okay. But first he's gonna make our goddess yes, dressing. dressing. Sure. He already put a little bit of white wine in it. Yes, I did. And he has garlic, chives, basil, parsley, some Greek yogurt, mm -hmm. and of course our children, we can't forget them, which are Himalayan salt and black pepper. Right. Okay. And oh, can't forget our other special treat. So, and also just to let you know that the month of June that we're in happens to be, this is why we also kind of did the security board here, happens to be fruit and veggie month, vegetable and fruit month. And so we have lots of it here. And it's also tea month. Like I said, since it is also tea month, we have a watermelon infused with mint mm -hmm. tea here. It is sugar-free, we have no sugar in it. You and I actually love drinking, you know, sugar-free tea. Yeah. Um, and what we usually do is that we also infuse, infuse it with the real fruits in it. So this also has chunks of watermelon. So that's where we'll get our real mm -hmm. added natural sugar from. Mm -hmm. And so Ian is going to make our dressing. He has his white wine. He's mm -hmm. putting in the chives. Mm -hmm. He's dripping the basil. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course. No, I'll put it all in. Yeah, you need it all in. The yeah. has to be nice and green. Since I haven't been, I've been on vacation or mm -hmm. sabbatical, you came up with a new little toy here for me. So just turn it upside yeah. down. Yep. Right. Okay. That's good enough. There you go. Another yep. child here. Yep. All right. Cool. Oh, I like this. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Cute, right? I like it. I like it. Since I had no help, I figured let me get some help. <laughs> Okay. People want to go on sabbaticals. <laughs> oh. Now they want to call it vacation. Sabbatical <laughs> vacation is sabbatical. All right. Last week it was sabbatical. Yeah, this so week it's vacation. It was sabbatical. Go figure, guys. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to pull one. Yeah. I'm going to put the pa uh, tomatoes and finish up the board with some uh, peppers and obviously the carrots. So uh, yep. I'm over here doing my uh, doing his usual mess up <laughs> like usual drop all over the place. Ian's back! <laughs> Live TV. But what happened to happen back? <laughs> oh, I love it. Uh, okay, so we got the tomatoes. I tomatoes. Was, you say tomatoes, tomatoes, I say tomatoes. tomatoes. Right. Now we're going to put some peppers. All right. 
get the peppers close. I feel like I'm almost doing like the bowl when I usually make my bowl. Yeah. yeah. I can't wait to have some snacks. Come on, eat so we can get to these questions and have these snacks. <laughs> okay. Ow. Get these questions. Carrots? Okay. Get your carrots. Carrots are good for your eyes. Beta carrots. All loaded with that beta carotene. Mm -hmm. We're almost finished, Mom. Okay. Actually, the people want to eat visually. I know. You're holding them up. Eat. I'm sorry. Nah, I'm okay. trying to guys. So this is how we did our charcuterie board. The great thing, like I said, about dealing with food or with cooking, you, it's your own creativity. So you could take this, you, you could take this charcuterie board and do your, totally your own thing. Um, so it's all about what is aesthetically pleasing to your eye, the amount of space you're working with on your board, what you want to put, again, because this is fruit and vegetable month, we don't have any sort of like, you know, dried meats like salami or pepperoni because it's celebrating fruits and vegetable month. So that's mm -hmm. why we have just that and we just have some, you know, dressings that would go pleasingly with that. Um, our sugar-free, you know, sauces for our fruits, which you kind of really don't even need it, but you know, presentation, right guys? Yep. So the only yep. accessory that I kind of bought to this, the extra was a granola, um, but really, you know, it's how you would set up your own table. And so, and I, I love the Lazy Susans because you could just kind of turn these around, you know, gently and everybody could take exactly what they want. And we have these mini skewers where you could just kind of stab your fruit or your vegetable and put it on your plate and go about your day. And so we're gonna take our fruit and vegetable after we do our vitamin content. Yes. Because you know, we still have to do that. And mm -hmm. then we're getting to taking our fruits and vegetables and snacking while we go through our Q&A that people had for us. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a little origin and history of charcuterie. Charcuterie is a word that is used to describe the shops in the 15th century in France that sold products that were made of pork and they included the pork internal organs. The French created charcuterie board using offal and other kinds of meat. Of course, nowadays we have a whole new different version of it, you know, with desserts and meats, dry meats and vegetables and fruits and cheeses. So that's really how Chakuri started back then. And now we've obviously modernized it more. So here for our vegetable table, we have carrots, vitamins A, baby carotene, biotin, potassium, broccoli, B1, B6, E, and manganese. Cauliflower, C, K, antioxidants, folate, and fiber. Our tricolor bell pepper, A, B2, B6, C, folate, niacin, and potassium. And our cherry tomatoes, C, folate, and potassium. Our ranch dressing has vitamins A, C, calcium, potassium, iron, folic acid. Now we need our Miracle Whip and Chipotle dressing together. And Miracle Whip has vitamins K, Chipotle has iron, magnesium, potassium. Then we have a honey Dijon dressing, A, C, B, calcium, potassium. And then we have our green goddess, which has our Greek yogurt, B12, calcium and selenium, basil, A, C, K, calcium, iron, magnesium, and manganese. Parsley, A, B, C, K, calcium, iron, and magnesium. And we have white wine, B2, B6, magnesium, niacin, and river fiber, and garlic. B C D six C manganese and selenium and chai A C river five and potassium iron thiamine and beta carotene. Then we have our fruit chakuri board, which has watermelon A B five C and potassium pineapple B six C copper folate manganese potassium and thiamine. We also have our grapes C. K and copper. Our apple slices, which has our red apples, B6, C, River Fiber, and our Granny Smith, A, C, and Fiber. Strawberry, C, K, Magnesium. Blueberries, A, C, K, Fiber, Manganese, and Potassium. We have cream cheese, A, D, Calcium, and Phosphorus. And we have 
granola, iron, magnesium, copper, and zinc. We also have our chocolate syrup, copper, iron, magnesium, and zinc. Our watermelon fused with mint tea is watermelon A, B5, C, and potassium. Mint A, C, calcium, magnesium, potassium. Real facts. People facing hunger are 3% more likely to be in poor health. Hunger can also lead to chronic diseases. To learn more, you can visit us at jbhcdc.org. Um, e, you're gonna, I guess, half your bowl is gonna be veggies and half your bowl is gonna be fruits. Fruits, yeah. Okay, so I'll take a little bit of everything. Okay. One apple. One apple. Two apples. Apple day keeps the doctor That's away. That's what they say. Uh huh. Always. Yeah. Just did a mess of doing that. No, you did an Ian. I did an Ian. <laughs> what do you know? <laughs> Love watermelon. Oh. Okay, so Oops. pineapple. Oh, pineapple. Yeah, pineapple. Mm -hmm. Try not to make a, another mess like Ian. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And the grapes. I cut them down. So, well, I gotta solve my one side of my plate because I gotta yeah, do veggies so, yeah. on the next. Okay, so. Ooh. Oh, I can put my hand on it so I can grab it, right? Mm -hmm. oh, the little oh. baby one. The little baby one. They do right there. And I'll go this way. You're going all full tent with all the fruit salts first? Or you're going to do it half and half? I'm going to put some later? veggies right here. Okay. Sounds good. I'll slide this near that way. See, I have my skewer. Mm hmm. Now we're right talking. Right here. Now you're talking. Okay. It too. Take my skewer because I have to use my chocolate dipping sauce mm -hmm. with. I'm going to take some blueberries. Blueberries Ooh. is good for you. Mm -hmm. Do you know what? that blueberries is actually really good for nursing moms? Really? Helps produce, yeah. Oh. No. Does it? Wow. Yeah. Learn something new every day. Actually, when I was a part of the chef for this. Seminole family. Mm -hmm. I used to make her blueberry shakes every day. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. Helps with lactation. Okay. Yeah. But this is my skewer. So, and hmm, yeah, so since I, I do have gloves on, don't beat me up, people. Don't Take a up. little. No, the people come to you in the comments. And, oh, that's true. Huh. Yeah. Comments. Okay, so take two clusters. Hello, how are you? So that's this side for me. Mm -hmm. Um where you wanna go? Slide which way? I'll go this Because I need to I need go. to pass things on to you. Yes. So you can take your fruit. Right. Okay. So first go. I guess I'll take some mm -hmm. a little bit some some bell peppers here. See, I need to get some orange. You hit the orange E? I hit them somewhere underneath. You want that? You want me to slide that way? Yeah, that's okay. good. That's so good. I guess I'll take some broccoli. Some yeah. right here. Thank you for grabbing that one. Okay. <laughs> some mm -hmm. right here. There you go. Okay. Take another broccoli. Okay. And I'll take some carrots since I'm right here. All right. I'm in the carrot zone. I'm gonna try all these dipping sauces here. Hold on. I'm bringing okay. it around. Some tomatoes. Oh. Mm -hmm. Tomatoes. 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 My tomatoes. Got some tomatoes here. Yeah. Okay, I'll take some. So, okay. here's the first. Uh, do you want any dipping sauce first? Uh, I'm going to try some of this over here with the, uh, actually. Okay, yeah. first question says, what made me pursue an education and career in culinary arts? Wow, okay. Well, here's the funny thing. 
I did not initially pursue a career in culinary arts. No? I have a background on Wall Street, actually. Of course. You know, so this was like a second kind of career thing, mm-hmm. you know, culinary. Um, and it was really like my husband that really encouraged me to go to culinary. So I didn't want to because what happens is that every year we throw these massive par- like parties um, around the summertime, around Labor Day. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I would make, I'd be cooking for like three days straight, making almost, it's, you know, Italian, Southern, you know, French, like all, you know, island, just a whole variety of like food. Okay. You know, spend hundreds of dollars, but it was what made me happy. Mm-hmm. You know, just having a whole bunch of friends and family come over through and I'd have these massive, like all these foods from all over. Well, I can't say from all over the world, but what I really particularly like, you know? Right. And he was like, Fran, you really you should go to culinary school. I'm like, well, I don't want to go to culinary school. I don't want to go back to school. I'm, you know, been there, done <laughs> that, already have a degree, you know, like, good, I'm good, you know? And he's like, yeah, but this will help you get the respect and recognition of really being called a chef because you would have earned your culinary education. I was like, ah, uh, I don't even, I don't even care to be called a chef. Like, I, I don't want to go to school. Right. And this was a fight for years, you know. And then one day I said, you know what? I think I'm going to take your advice and maybe I want to do something different. I'm, you know, getting out of the corporate world, and I'll go to culinary school. Yeah, just one day. I'm ready to do it. Yeah, I, you know, I'll try it. But right. no one prepared me for culinary school, how hard it was going to be. Right. You know, because when I went in, I was a lot older than my counterparts, you know, because they were like, most of them were fresh out of high school, oh, you know. Okay, yeah. And so they were like a good 20 years younger than me, 18, mm-hmm. 20 years younger than me, you know. And here I was already a wife and, you know, mom and, you know, just... <laughs> Starting all over, over again, so to say, right. you know, yeah, just, and new. it was grueling. I mean, I had class that started at 6 a.m., you know, and but I was one of those students that I, if I'm going to, with anything I do in life, this is just me, you know, I can't speak for everyone else. If I can't give it 2,000%, I don't want to do it. Yeah, if I that. cannot, not 1,000, 2,000%, I don't want to do it. And mm-hmm. so for me, I was determined if I was going to go, I was going to graduate at the top of my class, soon cum laude. I was going to be the best of whatever I can be. Mm-hmm. And so class would start at six and it would end about three. But I wouldn't leave school till midnight. And that was only on my days off though, because I did have a job. So all my days off, I was at school from 6 a.m. to midnight and come back the next day again to class. And for me, because what I did was not only was I paying for this education, I was going to get some free education on top of it. I was going to stick around these chefs and plug their brains mm-hmm. and ask them to be their helper. And that's what I did. Right. And so when my class was done, I would be like, do you need help? And they always needed help. Right. And I would become their sous chef. So I would learn, I would get another dose of free education on top of what I was already learning. Sometimes I would learn things that ahead of my classmates because they were teaching other classes that were advanced that I wasn't in yet, but then right. I was their helper and I was already learning. What that did for me is that it gave me the advantage, but I sacrificed my time for it. However, I had a lot of um, students that didn't like me. Of course. They didn't like me because the chefs loved me. Yeah. And and the chefs made it a point that they loved me, you know, but it but I sacrificed, that's what I'm saying. And <clears throat> excuse me. Also, they would the, the school would also hold um like master classes that you had to pay for to the public. And I would pay for those classes additionally and come take them. On top of my education I was paying for, right. I wanted what everybody else was also kind of getting out there. Wow. So that's another reason why they loved me that day. So I was fully invested and I would pay regular price like the public and come out there and spend six hours learning how to use, you know, and all these different recipes that they were teaching the public. On top of your On education. top of my education. Wow. On top of staying wow. to midnight on my days okay. off from work. And so, you know, there was a lot of jealousy and friction there, but it's like, but nobody was willing to do what I was willing to do. Yeah. No one was willing to pay extra for classes or stay late. They wanted to go and hang out or go to their jobs or go do whatever else they were doing. And that's mm-hmm. fine, but don't be upset with me who's willing to do, do the it. same. Exactly. So again, it wasn't my first 
thing to do, but it opened up doors for me in the aspect of, I ended up having my own cake design business and catering business. Um, so, which was really great. You know, I got to be an entrepreneur and just have my own cake and catering business. I was a private chef for some, you know, wealthy family. So it, it, it opened up doors for me. But again, with culinary school, nobody told me how grueling it was going to be, <laughs> how you would be on your feet all day, how you had to learn math again. And math was never my best subject at school. And all of a sudden, when I started doing, because I happen to be a chef that is a little different than most classically trained chefs. I happen to have a degree in baking and pâtisserie, which is, it's because well, I went to a French culinary school, so they call it pâtisserie, which is pastry, and culinary arts, which is the cooking side. Yeah. Um, not too many chefs, usually a chef specializes in one or the other. I just happen to have the gift to do both, and which is truly a great gift, but I didn't realize how much math I would need Again, because I told you in the beginning that I was determined, determined to finish at the top of my class. So here I was, older than my counterparts, like I said, and got a tutor for math. Because when I had math homework and was doing baking percentages and things like that, that I didn't remember, obviously, I had gotten a tutor. Wow. Because I was going to finish all my homework with A's. I was going to finish at the top of my class, which I did. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why it's all about what you really want to do, what you're passionate about. You'll invest in yourself. And that's what I did. I invested in myself. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's how that kind of became what it is. Okay. Um, so another question we were asked is, why do you believe it's important to include vitamin content in your video? Okay. Uh, Ian, do you have something you want to say on that? I think... Uh... What I've learned with this, what you're saying here, um, vitamins are very important in everybody's lives and what you eat and what's in front of you. And I've learned a lot of different things with what you've been saying with the different vitamin contents and how important they are and how uh, certain vitamins are better to have in your systems and what, what mm -hmm. is needed. I mean, Especially when I, I didn't know too much about what was, what's in cinnamon and what's what's needed for it and all that, you know, for diabetics and everything else. To me, it's very important that we learn about um, vitamins. That's where I come across with it. For me, I think it's important because for one, you know, we eat what we eat. Some people mm -hmm. eat very healthy, some people don't. And there's some, some things that our body definitely craves and needs more than others. And for example, I have a really good friend of ours. Um, she's actually my manager who, who works for me. And she has um, an autoimmune disease. And a lot of the things that we see here that are so good, nutritious and good for us, she can't eat pineapple. She can't eat watermelon. She can't have strawberries, you know? She can't have bell peppers. She can't have broccoli. She can't have cauliflower. Things that are really great for your body that has great nutrition, she can't eat it with her autoimmune disease. I mean, she's very limited at what she can have because what it does is that it triggers something else that'll make her very sick. And so, you know, there's some deficiencies that we lack, you know, and that's why we, it's important for me, I think that I let you know, hey, because you may need more of something and right. may need a decrease of something else. And also, I think that I didn't want to just have a YouTube channel like everybody else's. I thought with the background that I had and the knowledge that I had, I should bring something more giving to the community than just some attractive looking food, you know, because I think anybody who's out there are making nice, attractive looking food, you know, and trying to share their knowledge of how to make things to people. But I wanted to give them my somewhat of my culinary education you right. know of when i had to study nutrition in school i wanted them to have some of that you know i want to and also i want them to be okay what they know that they're putting in their body with certain things that may ail them that certain spices or certain again i'm not a doctor i'm not claiming to no. be a doctor i'm no one's physician here mm -hmm. but this is something they can look up themselves you know and how 
certain herbs and certain spices are good for certain things. Certain vegetables are good for certain things that we may not need to go the chemical way. We can actually treat ourselves with wholesome food that is grown from the ground. So, yes. that's why I thought it was important. Very important. Okay, so another question that I was asked was, what is my favorite kitchen gadget? That's hard. Well, that's a hard. Really? That one is a really hard Good question, question for me yeah. to answer. Only because I'm like the flavor of the month. <laughs> Whatever gadget is out, I'm with it. Oh my God. I love gadgets. I don't know why. It's just something I, you know, a new shaker, and I want it. You know, a new knife. You know, it's these are the things that make me happy. Some people, clothes and shoes and diamonds and jewelry make them happy. Me, it's gadgets. Mm -hmm. um, and it's gad not just gadgets, it's like cooking gadgets, things to use for cooking or baking. That's what, you know, because that's what my heart is warm and fuzzy, right? Creating, making things for you guys mm -hmm. and for the family or whatever. So if I have something I can use to make things to open up that jar easier, it's a gadget for me. I want it, you know, or yeah. So it's, you know, there's it's no one particular gadget that I love more than the other. It was funny. When I come back every other day, or when I come in, and it's like, oh, check out this new thing. I was like, oh, here we go again. My mom with the gadgets, another gadget, but they're, they're actually all unique. And it's small things that make me happy, like yeah. gadgets. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, if it's a gadget out there, I want to know about it, you know? So, uh, here's, a, here's another question. Um, what prompted me to start Joseph Dreamhouse? Yeah, I was talking. Okay. Now we're talking. <laughs> this one's kind of, it's, it's a very personal and kind of like dear question to me because since I was a kid, I remember being about eight years old. Um, <sighs> it was a movie I watched on television <clears throat> from Melissa Gilbert. And I believe it was called Choices of the Heart. Okay. Um, and she was a missionary. And for years, I, I wanted to be a missionary. I thought I was going to be a missionary. Because um, I've always kind of wanted to always give back. Since I was a kid, I've always had this give back spirit and always wanted to help um, people. And so my love of cooking, I'm thinking I'm going to culinary school, you know, and I did. I had a chance to have my own things going on. But it was really so I could learn about food and teach it to people and educate people about the knowledge that I was going to get from nutrition. And so that prompted me into wanting to get into something that was food related. I wanted to do something that could help the community that was food related. And it was helping families who suffer from food insecurity. Um, and it's, it's so real especially more these wow. days mm -hmm. with the cost of everything on the horizon, you know, that families who are working hard, you know, can't even buy decent food. Like they can't even buy all these vegetables and fruits that you see here because one pepper is costing $4, $4 and change, yeah. Yeah. Crazy. you know, for one pepper, mm -hmm. you know, and with the prices of gasoline on the rise and, you know, just everything just being astronomical, it's difficult for them. So you're finding people who are now with actual decent jobs who now need assistance. And those, of course, who will live paycheck to paycheck, two, three jobs, trying to make ends meet to supply, you know, food to their family after paying the electrical bill or the car note or the, you know, the car broke down, paying the mechanic. Crazy. Now they don't have enough for food. And now summer's out, for example. Oh. The kids are not getting the free lunch anymore. Mm -hmm. And it forces them to seek a food pantry or food bank. Um, so sometimes people think that, oh, it's homeless people. It's no. not just homeless people. Homeless people are really comprised of only 3% of people who suffer from not having food. Did you know right. that? Wow. A lot of people don't know that. It's really the working class poor. It's really what it's called the working poor are really the ones who are 97% of those who are food insecure, believe it or not. You have people who work sometimes two, three jobs, wow. a husband and wife, sometimes working four jobs among themselves and still, still can't do still, it. Right. And they're food insecure. 
Mm-hmm. So I think there's a misconception for that. And so for me, it is very near and dear to my heart, you know, my charity in helping provide nutritious food. Because it's like, I don't just want to give people a bag of chips. What is that? That's just a quick snack to hold them over. It's not full of nutrition in it anyway. It's empty K calories. That's how we would call it, the term, the technical term, nutrition. I want to give them nutrient-dense food, foods that are live, fresh, that are great in their bodies, whether that's some protein from meat or that's some protein from beans, you know, some grains, some rice, nice. you know, some pasta, you know, something that will give them, you know, fresh fruits, vegetables that would give them nutrient-dense food in their bodies. So it was important for me to start with the knowledge that I had to start a nonprofit, which is Joseph Dreamhouse. And so it's one of the reasons that I also started my chefing because I want to bring awareness to the world about food insecurity. It's not just someone that you see that you think is homeless. It could be your next door neighbor. It could be your family member. It could be you because something happened and that one paycheck you got now has to go towards a repair. So now you're food insecure for two weeks sometimes a month, sometimes longer. So this stuff is real. And so for me, it was important for me to share my knowledge and my experience of going through this and supporting my community. And so that's why I started Ma Sheffin and, you know, Ma Sheffin and Joseph Greenhouse got together as a team. You know, there's a, what's that saying? Hunger has no... Hunger has no, no face, race, no race, race no nothing. zip code, no exactly. ethnic background. Yeah. No color, no Not gender, that, no, nothing. you know, it has the face of food insecurity yeah. can be anyone, any age, any, you know, exactly. any background. Exactly. Okay. Our other question is, mm-hmm. what, okay, Ian, this is a question for you and me. What is your favorite food or dish to make? Wow. What is my favorite food or dish? No, I always... That's a, that's a hard question for me because I have fun making all of them. But uh, what, yeah, what, what do you? What's your favorite? Just your favorite dish? You remember the uh, shepherd's pie? Mm-hmm. I enjoyed that one. That's your favorite. That was your favorite dish to yeah, make. Yeah, I had fun making it. Okay. I had fun making it. But you know, we have fun making turkey ball and eggs. Yeah, I mean, there's so many different ones. But that had that had a lot of different things. I've never, I never really made a turkey uh, shepherd's pie. So to me, you know, I thought shepherd pie was just meat but, but we my chef and wait we yeah just, we use we every take, vegetable we can kind of think of we, we come a different route <laughs> for me that's difficult because yeah. as a person who's a foodie who loves food who likes to create with food who likes to nourish with food it's a tough question for me mm-hmm. because i one time would have said i love to make lasagna oh. but that's not my thing now um I'm gonna go. I know it's gonna sound strange. I'm gonna go with breakfast pizza. That was good. That was because delicious. I just love the nan bread. Is, yeah. And I just love like anything I could put on it, like the kitchen sink on mm-hmm. it. Egg, sausage, hash browns, you know, bacon, you know, peppers, mushroom. So I'm gonna go with that. That's a, that's a, that was you know? a great. That was fun. So that's probably one of my <laughs> one of my favorite dishes today. Yeah, you know, that was a lot of fun. Um. Oh, this I think you just answered. It was a question for you, Ian. What was your favorite dish that you made at Ma Chefin? And it was And it was the Shepherd's, shepherd's Pie. pie. Yeah. Okay. But then again, yeah, that was that was the, uh, the turkey ball. Oh, here's another question for you, Ian. Do you think you can make a full meal now on your own? One hundred percent. Okay. That, that's you hear this guys? One hundred percent. You need to challenge Ian. <laughs> the next meal. <laughs> He's doing on his own and I'm gonna sous chef him. <laughs> Okay, we'll try that. Okay. Oh, how about some eggs? <laughs> Scramble. You hear this? This is a guy who's making all on I'm his playing. own. Yes, I'm playing. Yes, no. Well, you know, you guys let us know what you want Ian to make. Yeah, there you go. That's what it. you want Ian to make on we'll this we'll show. Do that. But I'll tell you the truth. What I've learned here is incredible. I mean, I, I'm learning as I'm learning more. But when I first you got started, a free fifty thousand dollars education, right? Thank you. Oh. That's a good. One. If they ask me a question of why I wanted to do it, <laughs> oh yeah, that's coming up for you. Oh, it is. All right. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll answer it in a second. There it is. That's your next question, actually. What is Ian, it? what made you want to do my chefing? 
Uh, well, since I worked with Joseph's Dreamhouse and I, you know, I basically run mom, help out mom with the inventory, we really running the inventory. Uh, she came up with the idea that she wanted to do the chef show. And she came up and asked me, and I knew that she has this incredible uh, way she went through to become a chef. And I said, you know, okay, my age is a little above and above, but I was like, yeah, for a free, for a free fifty thousand dollar <laughs> education, I'm here. You hear that? Ian's with the free ninety nine program. No, yeah, no, no, but you know, it, to learn things that I, you know, haven't, you know, did before, and learning how to, you know, you know, cut things and learning how to, you know, make things and cook things. Hey, I'm learning as much as y'all are learning. And I'm having a great time at it. And I couldn't be doing it better with, uh, without Mama next to me. I'm Thank having a you. fun time with you. Good. Don't stop taking sabbaticals, okay? No, no more it. sabbaticals for me. I had to take a nice little month. I'm okay. Okay, so the question for me is, what is my hardest meal to cook? Wow. Hmm. Nice. What is my hardest meal to cook? I don't think for you. Okay. It's not that it's my hardest meal. It's probably one of my least favorite foods to cook, <laughs> you know, because I had to study the cuisines around the world in culinary school. Mm -hmm. um, it's just one of the least cultural foods that I, I only because I'm not a fan of one of the key spices. Um, and so I, there is one meal that I love that they make, but I'm not a huge fan, so it's, it's it's hard for me to cook it because I don't necessarily really enjoy really eating it. I kind of don't want to say what it is because I don't want people being upset, right, right. you know? But it's just... And I've used the spice, actually, and have done a great dish with it here. Um, but I guess on my terms, it works. On the terms of the cultural food itself, it, it doesn't work for me, for my palate. Mm -hmm. So I'm indirectly answering this question because I think that everyone, every culture of food is phenomenal and it's great. But I think that as human beings and as individuals, we have different, we all have different palates and things mm -hmm. that we like more than others. And for me, it's just one of those foods that's a little least liking to my palate. Um, so it's not that it's, difficult for me to make. I'm sorry I'm not answering the question directly for you guys, but I really don't want to offend anyone. And so it's just they tend to use this spice in everything. Chakra? No. Oh. I'm not going to tell you. You're going to huh. get me in trouble out here? Oh, I see what you want to do. You want, I, you want all the love that comes for you and all the hate that comes for uh, me. Can uh -uh. I say one thing? No, no, no. No, I know no, something you're not that you me don't on like. Spot. Oh, I know something that you don't like to work with a lot. What? Bananas. <laughs> Oh yeah. Well, it's definitely not that. He's right. I despise bananas. You won't see me doing anything. No banana foster for you guys. No, I don't. Okay, so I'm going to tell you guys a real quick story. So I was yeah. working as a pastry chef at a five-star dining restaurant where all the celebrities would come out here in Bo it was in Boca, um, in South Florida. South Florida. Yeah, and. I, one of my things to make every day was banana cream pie, and I am not going to lie to you guys. I'm going to be very honest. The first three months was difficult for me, and you know, you're obviously on probation at that time. And I spent my first three months literally in the bathroom no. regurgitating. I'm so sorry good. to be so graph, but I have it just was not good for me. I don't like bananas. I don't like the way they smell. I don't like the way they feel. So after the first three months, I built a tolerance for it, but I never tasted it. I would right. always ask, have one of my colleagues come over and sneak them, but how's this taste? You know, and I go on what they say. But they ordered it all the time, right? No, it actually, was the number one thing on the it menu. It was the number one thing on the menu. <laughs> Crazy, right? For someone who wouldn't even taste it, who doesn't like it. Because as a chef, you really should taste everything. Mm -hmm. But that was one thing I just could not do. And I have to be honest, I don't need to, I know this, this is gonna sound more bizarre, you offered me a million dollars, I still wouldn't eat it. Uh -huh. That's how much I can't do it. It's it's almost like my kid with mac and cheese. Offer him a million dollars, he's not gonna eat it. 
Mm-hmm. You know, it's that's how I feel about bananas. Oh, but I'll eat bananas cousin all day, all night. Call plantains. <laughs> and Ian calls a plantains. plantains. I say plantains. <laughs> and I've even done it, a plantain yes, sandwich we on did. the show. Oh, so I have no of, problem with plantains. But bananas is a no-no. Next question. Next question. Yeah. I don't know. People want to ask these hard questions today. That's okay. Well, no, that's what we're doing, right? Okay, question so answer. next question is... What is my favorite spice to cook with? Oh, come on. Okay, Y'all I have a couple. I have a couple, guys. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, on uh, my savory side, I will tell you right now, it's herb de Provence oh, and smoked paprika. Mm-hmm. On my sweet side, it is cinnamon and it is cardamom. Brown sugar. Nah, that's not a spice, oh, Ian. All right. But oh, yeah, cardamom. Damn. Those are my go-to spices. I love them. Cardamom is a rich Indian, you know, dessert type of spice, but so flavorful, so aromatic. Cinnamon is good for so many things. Like if you have a cut, it'll help heal your wound quicker. If you want to try to lose weight, you can put yeah. the cinnamon sticks in your water and it'll help curb your appetite. Love There's that, so yeah. many benefits. So it's great for lowering, helping with your blood, um, your um glycemic Jeez. index, you know, how glowing yeah. your blood sugar. So, I mean, oh, I just love that sweet spice. And I just love smoked paprika because smoked paprika has a little kick to it. Really, like a little tiny little spice kick to it. it was, along with the smokiness mm-hmm. of it. And um, and what was the other? Herbe de Provence. Oh. I love it because it's so elegant. It's so French. Lavender. So Francais. The lavender. Because it has lavender in it. And it's mm-hmm. just so, oh, <laughs> smells so beautifully. It tastes so good in your food. All right. And our last question, Ian, is yes. for you. What's that? What is the meal you really miss but can no longer enjoy? Because they know that you have alopecia? Uh, no, uh, acalacia. Acalacia, right. Yeah, my stomach. A lot of the rice dishes I wish I can uh, really have back. Uh, I would say uh, like a shrimp scampi with rice. I always enjoy mm. that. Or a veal francaise with rice. Mm. Yeah. So you miss rice? I miss the rice dishes. Yeah, rice dishes to me were always very good. Uh, even with my pasta dishes, I got to be very careful. And those dishes, will, you know, you always are looking out for me when it comes to the pastas. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I wish the pasta dishes too. I miss them too, because guess what? I suffer with him. Yes, yeah, because you Because know. I don't make rice on set because I know he can't eat it. Right. And if we're working together as a team, we have to be able to eat together. Right. So I end up suffering because I love rice, but Ian can't eat it. So I usually make cauliflower rice and he can have that. Yeah, or, yeah, I'll make a pasta that he can't eat all the shapes of pastas. So because he can't, there's certain pastas mm. if he's not, and not a sabbatical, I won't make <laughs> because I know that he can't. I'm here, it. guys. I ain't going anywhere. So you hear that? <laughs> I'm here, you guys. guys <laughs> you guys are asking these questions. You need to hold him accountable. It's there about accountability, people. Okay. Hold I'm him here. accountable. I'm here. Um. So, yeah, guys. You know. Oh, by the way, I got my little. Uh, you got your. You got I got your my shrine, little um, your bacon. My, my little bacon over yeah, here. You have your bacon. It, it sure wouldn't be good it's without good. the bacon, right? It sure wouldn't. It sure wouldn't. It sure wouldn't. It sure wouldn't. Guess what? When he wasn't here, I enjoyed myself. I had me some bacon. <laughs> he needs to go back on his sabbatical <laughs> so I can have more bacon. <laughs> but no, seriously, guys, no. I want to thank you guys for you know. Writing these questions and yeah, I appreciate you know, having us like this and, yeah. answer the few so you get to know us yeah. as we're nearing our 100th episode. Wow. Can you believe it? I'm getting chills. Oh. I'm getting chills. Wow. I thank you guys for all the love and support. Like for people who just like kind of started out a few short months ago, your love and support has really helped us, you know, yeah. gain momentum and really bring out the awareness of what I wanted of food insecurity and, you know, finding out what vitamins are in food and making you want to enjoy eating different foods, you know? And um, I want to continue making you guys happy. So continue sticking with us and stick with Big Baby over here. Yes, please. We are really enjoying this. I actually enjoyed today. I really did. This is great that they're actually 
sending us questions and wanting to know about us, especially about and Ian loves people to know about him. Trust me. Yes, of course. I'm a little bit more private, but yeah, but Ian loves people to know about him, so that was a good thing. But I like the idea that we get a chance to talk about Joseph's Dreamhouse to and bring it out. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, show people that what what's really going on in this world because it's yeah. crazy out there right now. It is. And uh, yeah, we really appreciate you, you know, keeping us with us because the more you keep coming back, the more Mama dreams up some more stuff for us to make. It's That's all true. coming from Mama, and it's not like it's just planned. She she dreams them up, and they come to reality. Ma Chef and wife. I dream them up. Hear that, guys? Mm-hmm. Let me keep dreaming That's it. while I dip my Go ahead. strawberry and chocolate. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today. Yes. We really appreciate, appreciate it. it. Um, thank you for listening and eating with us virtually. Mm-hmm. And you guys too can make a charcuterie board. Simple. Yeah. I mean, we did what we did simple. You can get more extravagant if you want. You can add meats and cheese in it as they, other people do. But because we want to stick to the theme of June being fruits, fruits and vegetable month, we did that. You know, great for instead. parties. Great Absolutely for parties. great for parties. Thank you again. And with yes. the rest of these, we're going to go ahead and we're going to steam up the vegetables. Oh, yeah. And we'll make cook. a cheese sauce and oh. cook that with some fish. Oh, and we're going to eat. God bless you. Simple. Thank you guys for hanging out with us. We love you. And if you're new to my chefing, welcome and get a big hug from us. That's true. We love you guys. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.